Hello and welcome to Release Date Rewind. My name is Mark J. Parker and I am a film lover, filmmaker, film celebrator. And normally this is an audio podcast wherever you get your podcasts on your favorite apps. But thanks to Portland Media Center, you are about to watch the video component of this show where I celebrate movie anniversaries with my friends. Each month, I usually talk about two different movies that I love with different friends, and we talk about the making of the movies, trivia, any fun memories associated with them. So I hope you enjoy, because now it's time to rewind. Okay, everybody, so this is a special episode because my husband, my Bill... Greg Clements is on the show. Hi, Greg. Hello. So, Greg... Finally. Yeah, finally, yeah, because this is... Uh, Some real talent. This is the 29th episode of Release Date Rewind, so, you know, finally you are here. And it's funny, because you don't even listen to this show, so you don't even really know, like, what this show's about. I... Drips and drabs. You hear me through the walls and through the floors shouting at people right. online, but... I do know what it's about. I helped you conceive of You that. did, yeah. So, Greg and I were talking about this idea... Back in summer 2020 on a hike, I remember, which was great. Mm. Where were we hiking, though? Do you remember? Mount Agamenicus. Oh, that was Agamenicus. Okay. In York, Maine, not mm -hmm. far from where we live. So Greg is, um, you know, it's funny because he loves this movie that we are about to chat about, which I love it as well. But Greg doesn't really love re-watching old movies. Would you say you don't really love? I don't really like watching movies that are black and white. Oh God, yeah, that's hard for you. Yeah. Um, but I, I, yeah, I, I don't get a, a huge thrill out of out of rewatching just like regular old movies. Reg, what do you mean? There, there what, you what do you mean? And, and that's that. Like, like if if you told me I had to rewatch, um, I don't know, The Client. Oh, that's so funny. I was thinking about that movie randomly today. That's so weird. I love that movie. Or but you like, wouldn't want to rewatch that movie. Or like. I, Pelican Brief. I oh, don't know. Uh, you're talking are... about movies that I would gladly no, rewatch. Just, I don't know. Okay, well, thank but you. but so you wouldn't want to rewatch them? No. Wow, they those don't are hold, like... they don't hold a special place in my heart. I'm pretty sure both those movies came out in the same year too, 1994 ish. Well, yeah, I was trying to think about movies around this time. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. This was 1992, so close. But um, but it's funny because Greg has rewatched a couple old movies that I've needed to watch for this show that I feel like you enjoyed rewatching like Romeo and Juliet and Oh yeah. And um let yeah, me but, think. Oh Romeo and Michelle, you were enjoying most of that when when I had that on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um but you did not love watching The Godfather. Greg made no. it halfway through. No, boring. Um you you watched or re I think this was your first time seeing The Hand That Rocks the Cradle when I had to watch it for the show. That you pretty much mm. saw the whole thing. Yeah, it was interesting. I mean it's problematic now, oh, yeah. nowadays, but yeah, it was interesting. Yeah. But, uh, I, but oh, see, like, Clockwork Orange but, you watched and you Yeah, that liked. was good. Yeah. But see, like, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle, I don't need to rewatch. Mm. But Dolores Claiborne, I could rewatch. Well, maybe... A hundred times. Do you know what year that came out? 1994. Close. I'm pretty sure... Wow, that's funny. From one Dolores to the other, because we're about to talk about yeah, Dolores... Yeah, spelled differently. Van Cartier. Yeah, that was 1995. Okay, I was going to say 93, right. so you were close. Oh, it's on Hulu. There you go. So maybe you'll come back in a and couple I have years it on, And I have that. it on DVD. Yes. And I, I remember I, I brought that to college, and so I wrote my initials on it, just so in case my roommate was going to steal my copy of Dolores, oh, that's true. Of Dolores Claiborne. Yeah, no, I, I hear that, because roommates... I remember my roommate, um, short-lived, thank God, one of the worst people in the world... My roommate, um, when I was at Fordham for just a f couple months in the beginning of that, of uh, my time in New York, he, I found out he went through my DVDs and was watching my Are You Afraid of the Dark collection. So I understand wanting to put your initials on things and all that. But um, not only did he um, design the logo for this show, I, I mm -hmm. give thanks to you at the end of every mm -hmm. episode. Yep. Um, he's a great logo thanks. designer. Yeah. I, I mean, isn't it just... You're just saying the credits. It's not like you're giving me praise. Well, I say thank you to Greg for doing the logo. Yeah, but you could, you could praise a little bit more. A little bit of praise wouldn't hurt. So, yeah, you did that. He did that, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the designer. And also, he's a candle maker. Right. NubbleLightCandle.com. This episode is brought to you by Nubble Light Candle. Right. NubbleLightCandle.com. Mm-hmm. 
a Maine's most loved can- soy candle. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, okay, so let's let's rewind, my boo. Let's go back to the early 90s. I was only five years old when this movie came out. You were probably... How old are you now? Seven. 30? You were... Si- or, you're not 37 yet. No, but I was born in 1985, and it came yeah, out in... It came out... Okay, so I was six and a half. You were six and a half, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So we are going back to May 29th, 1992. That is when this... Such a funny, memorable, great movie, Sister Act, was released wide in the U.S. So I'm going to just set the scene for you, Greg, and feel free to chime in. This is what was going on in news and pop culture at the time. I always find this interesting because Mm -hmm. it's just funny to see, like, when, you know, kind of piece together when things were happening. So on the news side, very interesting. Vice President of the U.S., Dan Quayle spoke at the Commonwealth Club in San Francisco, and during his speech, he criticized the TV show Murphy Brown and the character (laughs) for mocking, I quote, for mocking the importance of fathers by bearing a child alone. He was so put off that it was a poor example of family values. Isn't that interesting? (laughs) So because I guess she was a single mom, I, I remember watching a few episodes of Murphy Brown and liking it, but I don't know the details, but... So she's a single mom, working mom, and he put that show down. That was not a good American family. You need a a father. You need a man (laughs) in the family. So that's interesting. That happened in May 1992. Mm -hmm. Also, earlier in May 1992, also on the news front, the Rodney King riots had just happened a few weeks prior Mm -hmm. to this movie. So that's an interesting thing. And I'm bringing this up because I don't really remember it, but I feel like maybe you will because we've talked about Nickelodeon. The Nickelodeon time capsule was buried. In May 1992. Does that ring a bell? Mm. Do you know anything about that? Yeah, but didn't it, didn't they just dig it up recently? Did they? I feel mm-hmm. like it's. I've heard about it, but maybe maybe I don't. But anyway, so yeah, maybe they just recently dug it up, but it was buried this time, 30 years ago. So I thought that was interesting. It's a good topic for your podcast. Is it buried or buried? Oh, I say buried because it's no, not... You know, you just said buried. No, buried. Yeah, exactly. Buried. But it's buried. Buried, buried. Berry, like strawberry. Well, that's B-E-R-R-Y. Wow. It's not for me to decide. I don't bury a, a body. You bury a body. You have to ask the audience. Audience, mm-hmm. what do you think? On that one. Email us at releasedaterewind <laughs> at gmail.com. <laughs> Moving on, on the music side, this will be fun for you. Because okay. Greg loves music, everyone. Okay. Jump. By Criss Cross. That was very popular at the time. Mm. Number one single. My favorite jump, song. Jump, right? Yeah. And then, my love and now you're never gonna get it. Mm. That's in vogue. In vogue. Those were very big songs at the time. Oh. Flipping back and forth uh-huh. between number one. Those yeah. were top songs. Billy Ray Cyrus's debut album oh. dropped oh. this month. Just right, right before this movie. Featuring Achy Breaky Heart was yep. a popular song. His album okay, so fun, was out. So yeah. fun fact about that. Billy Ray Cyrus was my first... Crush Con- concert ever. My first mm. concert in it was in New Hampshire, hmm. and um, where it New was Hampshire? on a big I don't know it was on like some big fairgrounds or whatever. So you guys and drove I a went, few hours. Yep, and went with some of my mom's coworkers. So I was like six, wow. and that was my that was my first. Yeah, it was probably right around this time. Concert, real redneck. Wow, six years old is young was, for a concert too. Uh, Billy Ray Cyrus and the uh, the opening act or his band at the time or something was called the kentucky headhunters did you like them no i didn't enjoy it you know why because it was like in july and it was really really hot oh so that was right after this movie came out Mm -hmm. okay yeah i was probably wishing i could get home to watch it but yeah probably i could see that for you but wow six okay you were young to go to a concert Mm -hmm. but i'm sure it was fun well yeah i mean it was like it was part of like a fair was it like a yeah Mm mm-hmm you know that's so funny do you think miley was there probably i mean probably maybe i don't know about probably but maybe because she might have just been home with the mom and her siblings sexist okay well i don't know i'm just saying okay moving over to the tv side lots of tv news at this time barney and friends had just premiered the month prior april on pbs so barney was taking over the world wow did you watch Barney when you were a kid? You know, I did, but I always knew that I was a little, a little like, a tad too old for it <laughs> because it was a little sing-songy. Oh, you were, you, you already uh, kind of like... I felt like, I always knew, I'm like, I don't think this is right for me. You know, that's interesting because I feel like I watched it and kind of enjoyed it, but I but also agree. I, I was a little younger. Yeah, I was a year and a half younger. Well, I am a year and a half younger than you. Yep. And I was then too. Yep. But I feel like... 
I also kind of immediately, I, some songs I liked, but some I immediately started kind of making fun of in my mind. You know, the infamous, mm. I love you. Anyway. What's that one? I love you, you love me, we're all in you, a family. Sing, sing the whole I just Can did. you do the whole song? No, no, I no. don't know. I don't know. I'm making that I up. I don't think you were a real fan then. No. Anyway, moving on. Late night TV. Johnny Carson ended his run on oh. The Tonight Show in May 1992, and Jay Leno officially replaced him. Wow. Right? That okay. was big. Get this. All these major shows were ending in May, April, May 1992. Golden Girls, The Cosby Show, Growing Pains, Who's the Boss, and MacGyver. Those series finales had just aired right oh. before this movie came out. Wow. That's a big, that's a big moment yeah. in, in TV. And then how funny. Just a couple weeks after Sister Act came out, the first ever MTV Movie Awards aired. Oh, interesting. First one was 1992. Maybe we'll talk about it later, but I have a fun fact about oh. this mo- about Sister Act and the MTV Movie Awards. Well, we're going to talk about it again later, but do you want to share it now? Well, uh, Kathy and Jimmy mm. was nominated for Best Breakthrough Performance. Yeah. Which is really, I mean, that would just never happen today. Why not? Well, because it's all, you know... I think it would. Little... I don't think they would give it to an older... I don't think they would do that for an older woman, especially a woman who was a little um, full-figured. Now they would totally do that. Um, Fuller-figured women are it's all like um, skinny little girls. Like, who's... Like, who's like a skinny... Like, the pretty little liars have You have to remember, though. You have to remember. Early 90s was a big time for... I don't want to say middle-aged people, but uh, here, she's 65 years old right now. So 30 years ago, when she was nominated, 30, she was around 35 or 36. So I know what you mean. Now right. things skew a little younger. Right. But back then, you right. didn't really have a lot of young, popular stars. They were well, more musicians. Actors were still like in their, like, a little older, you uh, know? Well, also... Um, sh- uh, Whoopi Goldberg was nominated. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Okay. Um, for the for the MTV <laughs> Movie Award. Uh-huh. It's just so funny to me. What? I, I, I mean, don't know that makes be- perfect sense. No, because it's just like, it just, it wouldn't happen. It just mm. wouldn't happen now. All right. I think it's, it's kind of like um, cyclical. Back 30 hmm. years ago, we had more movie stars that were a little bit older. Then it got a little younger with the wave of Clueless and Scream and Titanic. Mm-hmm. Then we were focused on the early 20s yeah then i think it got a little older again you know so it goes in and out but anyway so was that all you wanted to say about the yeah just, MTV i couldn't awards? believe i, I was you shocked. were really shocked that she was nominated yeah i was just shocked i think it was a great breakthrough well, performance. i mean it's like a family film and well, now you need like but it was a big movie now you need like explosions you need like two girls kissing you well need, like, yeah that was snakes wild need, things and cruel intentions changed that and then now all these superhero movies but back then I think all the action movies still were getting nominated. I know hmm. Terminator 2 got a lot. Independence Day. Like, those movies were huge at the MTV Movie Awards. But, you know. Hmm. Anyway, okay. So, moving on. Next up. On, and last on my little news kind of uh, setting the scene. Movies. Other popular movies at the time. Basic Instinct had been in theaters already for two months. That came out in March 1992. Never saw it. Okay, yeah. I've... I've is most that of the it. one with the bunny and the bo- boiling? No, bunny? that's Fatal Attraction. Different Michael Douglas movie. Basic Instinct is the infamous uh, leg uncrossing and she's not wearing underwear. Oh. Okay. And the ice pick. So okay. that movie came out two months prior to this, but was still at number one. This was back wow. at a time when yeah, movies... I saw that Sister Act never made it to number one. Isn't that fascinating? Four, I spent four weeks at four number weeks two. Four weeks at number two. Opened mm. at number two, stayed there for a while, but was in theaters. I have it in my notes somewhere. Was in theaters for like 17 weeks or something. Wow. Like all summer long from May to past Labor Day. So it made a ton of money. But yeah, isn't that interesting? Never number one. But so Basic Instinct was number one for a while. Beethoven, the dog, okay, yeah. that was huge. Mm-hmm. White Men Can't Jump. Never the, saw it. I never saw that either, but I know they just had their reunion at the Oscars this year. That was hugely popular. And now getting to main, those were movies that were a little older that were still in the top. This movie came out at the time when Lethal Weapon 3 and Alien 3, big sequels, Far and Away, which movie is I do like. It's one of my guilty pleasures. Nicole Kimmon and Tom Cruise. And Enya. And Encino Man with Brendan Fraser. Enya as an actress? No, no. The, oh, the famous okay. Enya song. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry, yeah. 
Um, she made a, like a theme song for it. But um, okay. that was big at this time when this movie came out, as was Encino Man. Did you ever see Encino Man? Um, Brandon. Brandon Fraser. Fraser. Yeah. Polly um, Shore. As a caveman. Yeah. But then didn't like he do another movie that was like kind of the same, Blast from the Past? Yeah. Where he, You're right. But with Alicia. He... He wasn't a caveman. He what? was, um, I think, a guy from like the fifties or something. Okay. Then brought to the nineties. But like, kind of, kind of the same. The same. And Cena, I, n- I don't think I actually ever saw Blast from the Past, or I didn't really care too much. But Encino Man was quite funny because mm. he's a true caveman, and it's like party atmosphere, you know, with these teens in California, and they, and he has long hair, and they think he's like, just like cool I think, and hot. Wasn't it Timothy Chalamet who like just said that the last, the last great american actor was brendan Fraser. oh really hmm. i know he's in a movie now or soon that apparently he's like amazing in. like it's his big okay. comeback well, so. maybe maybe I'll... he like gained a ton of weight for it like he looks unrecognizable hmm, great so yeah but um so yeah so that's kind of me setting the scene great. now in comes sister act to blow them all out of the water great. lounge singer dolores van cartier always wanted to be a star performer nothing you can say can tell but tonight, she's going to become a star witness. Hey, is there a problem? I've never seen anybody killed before. If you testify, I'm going to put you in the last place on earth that Vince would ever look for you. She's an ideal prospect for rehabilitation. Absolutely not. That is not a person you can hide. That is a conspicuous person designed to stick up. Bill Nunn, the actor Bill Nunn, comes up with the idea to hide Dolores in uh, a convent in San Francisco. And it's all about how she figures out how to fit in in this convent against against all odds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then has it like takes over the choir yeah and which is funny because it's like a punishment for her but right it ends up being amazing yeah. right so so she kind of in 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 through this process she kind of finds her calling because i feel like at the beginning of the movie we, we kind of think that she's like uh, done with music she's kind of like disenchanted by the idea of just singing to an empty room and so she finds herself through singing teaching gospel singing yeah that's you know and that's an interesting point because we meet her in the beginning in that great i mean it's so memorable and so fun when she's with her backup singers the ronnells i think they call themselves well the beginning is actually oh the beginning she's younger yeah with the nun and you know when she says when she says who can name the the 12 disciples Mm -hmm. and she says peter paul something and then Mm -hmm. she says and ringo i had no idea what that meant oh yeah i had no idea i'm like Ringo. It's okay. funny. I probably didn't either because I'm pretty sure I saw this in theaters with my mom's mom, which is interesting. She was very religious. She went to church all the time. So, and I, I remember being so in, entranced by Whoopi. I loved mm-hmm. Whoopi. But uh, it's kind of interesting to see this movie as a five-year-old. So I don't know if I saw this in theaters or the sequel. All I know is I know for a fact I saw one of them in theaters with my grandma and then talk to all my cousins on my mom's side at our old beach house in Ocean City about, about this movie. <laughs> and I said, I love Whoopi. Like, I feel like I am Whoopi. And they were like, what? And I, I truly felt like I, at a young age, I was like, oh, my God, this is man, I'm watching myself on screen. That, it's crazy you grew up to be gay. <laughs> I bet they were shocked. When they heard. It's just so weird. And, you know, I meant to text my parents. I got to ask them, why did my mom take me to see this and not you guys? Because they probably thought it was like, oh, she'll like enjoy it with him because it's really. They probably were like, Mark really wants to see this movie. He can't shut up uh, mm-hmm. seeing these commercials. It looks so funny. <laughs> and and Mama likes going to church. So, yeah, the two of them can go, you know. But, yeah, anyway. So, did you see this in theaters? I don't. I was thinking about that earlier. I actually don't think I saw it in theaters. You maybe rented it or no. saw it on, yeah. on demand. Well, because when did My Girl come out? That we talked about that, but that came out November 1991. So okay, well, six months before. So this. my girl was the first movie I remember seeing in theater. So it is possible. Okay. So yeah, that I saw Sister Act in theaters, but I don't, I don't it's, remember. It wasn't it. a memorable experience. No, I don't, I don't remember it. But I, I did have the VHS hmm. of of Sister Act. So my guess is this came out in May. This was May 1992. Okay. So so maybe six months. My later. guess is that 
by the time that Christmas rolled around, it yep. was on VHS. I would think so. And I got it on, on VHS. Yeah, you know, I would think so, but it's hard because back then, movies really took a while. This was at a time when, like, they took a whole year before they got right. to, like, on demand. So, yeah, I would think VHS was, like, six months, you know, around Christmas. That would have made sense. So, yeah, well, you never know. Maybe demand. you're... Like Did video, they have on demand? Like, um, yeah, yeah. 92? Yeah, like back then, I think so. I mean, I remember like I watching so. movies like from 1994 or 95 on first run, pay-per-view yeah, on demand. Yeah, so I don't know. Yeah. I assume. Well, you're the host, so. I well, don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so mm-hmm. of course it starts with the writer. This movie was written by Paul Rudnick, but it was under a pseudonym. It says in the credits, written by Joseph Howard, and that's because the script was rewritten so many times. Mm. And get this, look at all the people that worked on this movie. Of course, Paul Rudnick, like I just mentioned, Carrie Fisher, who apparently did a lot of Whoopi's dialogue, Nancy Myers, who normally, you know, writes comedy, but not this colorful, Nancy Myers, someone named Eleanor Bergstein, Jim Cash, Jack Epps Jr., and Robert Harling, who, fun fact about Robert Harling, he was involved with First Wives Club, as was Paul Rudnick. He did some uncredited reworking of the script on First Wives Club, which I talked about on the show Mm -hmm. before. So a lot of people were involved because Paul Rudnick first wrote this in 1987 with Bette Midler in mind. Oh, I could see that. Because, of course, she was huge, as she Mm -hmm. still is, but she was huge at that time. So he, I guess, was just not loving that the script changed so much since his original, you know, view that he was like, don't put my name on it, which is weird because it's so good. Well, the script to me feels very tight. Yeah. Very, like, tight. So I wonder if each successive person that came into just it just kept cu- kept cutting cutting and cutting, and, and cutting, and cutting i have a cutting. feeling carrie fisher is to thank for a lot of that tightness and the, the comedy and right. just the pace and the speed because yeah you know it's definitely and we'll get into the sequel it's definitely different than the sequel because the sequel doesn't have too many mm. quieter moments this movie definitely embraces some quieter moments especially when like dolores is in her cell in her room right. you know right oh yes moments mm-hmm. that you don't remember too much because of course with a movie like this mm. you remember the louder fun musical moments it's very musical the chasing and all that but yeah this movie embraces some of the maggie smith quieter slower scenes that are still very good you right. know so i wonder if maybe his original idea was a comedy but it was quieter and everyone just kept bumping it up well also i i think even with even when there are some slower scenes Every single thing that happens matters or is pushing the plot forward. Yes. There's no, there's like absolutely no observational, just like watching them move through the world kind of stuff in this movie. Right. With the exception of that one scene where Dolores is, is in her room and just sitting on the, on the couch. Uh, the couch. On the, the bed. bed. Looking sit, out the window? Sitting or... on the bed. Or, well, she's oh, just sitting oh, yeah. there like kind of like realizing like, what is my life? Right. And I... And, it's funny because movies at this time always use the saxophone oh, to God, it's to, so dated right to like to Ooh. let the audience know that like the main character's kind of feeling down oh yeah i think it would be great if you could find the sax moment and put that right here. oh my god that's funny yeah i'll see i mean we'll we'll see but um you know what i mean it's i like, totally know what and you like, mean you could almost envision like some lounge singer like some uh, saxophone player or something like standing oh, yeah. outside underneath the uh-huh. street light with, his, <laughs> with one foot propped up against the street. Light. It feels very much like that. Yeah. And it's funny because the music was uh, made by Mark. I believe his last name is Shaman who went on to do hairspray, the musical on Broadway. Oh yeah. So major mm-hmm. musical guy, but yes, yeah, some of the score is definitely dated, but that was very mm-hmm. common at this time. But yeah, so Paul Rudnick previous things he had worked on just to give everyone a little taste he didn't. He hadn't done much. He had only previously done uncredited revisions on the Adams Family movie, which had just come out six months before. That was another huge. great one. Another great movie. Wait, the first one or Values? The first one. Values okay. came out. That, it's funny. The first one's okay, but the second the one. The second is, one is really so. great. First one is good, but again, kind of like this. Rare, for, sorry, rare yeah. instance of the sequel being better than there. Yeah, there aren't too many of them. Because but, that's you know, not the case with Sister Act, sorry. He, yeah, Greg is so, not, we'll get into it because I'm so curious because I love Sister both. Act purist. I love both movies. Both are so memorable. So that's why I can't remember if maybe I saw Sister Act 2 in theaters. Either way. That's more likely. That's more likely. I would have been, th- that came out only a year and a half after this one. It was very fast. And Kathy and Jimmy had an ex- insane 1993 with Hocus Pocus and... Sister wow. Act 3. Yeah. So, you know. But um, we'll get into the sequel. But so, 
he worked on Adam's Family and a movie called My Stepmother is an Alien. <laughs> so this was big for him. The director, uh -huh. such a nice guy when I saw, and you were watching a little bit of the behind the scenes. He seems so nice. He died soon after this movie came out. Very right. sad. But director Emil Artelino, he had previously directed lots of dance documentaries, but then had major success with Dirty Dancing. Wow. Three Men and a Little Lady, the sequel. Uh -huh. Again, we talked about my our friend Melissa, who's been on the show a couple uh -huh. times. She loves Three Men and a Baby, the first one, and okay. probably the sequel. So he directed the sequel. And I do have a soft spot for, right around the same time, The Nutcracker with Macaulay Culkin. It's basically right. the ballet, but as a movie with Macaulay right. Culkin. I do love that one. Whoopi Goldberg. You can't talk about this movie without praising Whoopi Goldberg, whose real name I learned long, long ago. I remember reading this in a magazine at my old house in Morristown, New Jersey, at the pool, and I was shocked that Whoopi Goldberg and Sigourney Weaver's names were not real. I was like, I was like, Mom, did you know their names are not real? Her real name is Karen, but spelled C-A-R-Y-N, so not like your typical Karen. Okay. Karen Elaine Johnson. Shout out to Whoopi Goldberg, the only black woman to be an EGOT winner. Emmy, wow. uh, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony. So, and only one of 16 people who have them, so... But she had right. just won the Oscar the year before this came out for Ghost, which you just finally uh, saw with me right. not that long ago. Yes. Great movie. Great role. And she was already previously nominated for the Oscar for one of her very first movies. I think this was like the second movie she ever did, The Color Purple. Wow. I haven't seen it. I still haven't seen it either. I know. I know. We're, we're really slacking because yeah. now they're making a movie of the – they're doing a movie musical, a movie version of the musical that oh. Fantasia was in. Is Fantasia going to be in it? I think so, yeah. A she, lot like, of people are in it. I was going to say. Maybe, she, Whoopi might even be in it as a different role. She revitalized the color purple. On oh, yes. Right? Definitely. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah. It's funny to think that Whoopi was like the Jennifer Hudson's. You know, like every now and then you mm -hmm. have a star who wins the Oscar one. Right. Like, they didn't really do much. Well, maybe you In know, movies. Maybe you know this, but, like, did we know, like, did, like, was it known to the general public that Whoopi Goldberg could sing? I don't I don't think so. I mean, she I, when I was watching some behind the scenes making of stuff, they were like, "Can you sing?" and she was like, "Sure, whatever." Like she didn't even really know if she could really sing. Right. But like she can. She can. She can enough right. in this movie. No, it's but, not like you need needed... at least she has like a nice And they tone. I feel like Harvey Keitel's character, what was his name, Vince? I feel like he even says, or someone says in this movie, that she's not even that great of a singer. You know what I mean? Right. Like, that's, uh, that's a line that she's sort right. of like, not even that good as a Vegas showgirl. Right. So it works. But yeah, she's great in right. this movie. But 1992, they, there wasn't a lot of attention paid to like fixing the vocals in, right. in, in songs, in, um, you know, in oh, production. Yeah. There or wasn't a lot of producing. So like, I don't think, you know, there was no auto tune really. No. Or maybe there was something similar, but. Yeah, I was I I always cuz I always thought oh she she was a singer. Like when I was yeah. little I was like oh she, this is a singer doing a movie like and if Madonna. That, yes, if that movie was made now, absolutely a singer would, would be, be in Jennifer that role. Hudson. It would be Jennifer Hudson, it would be Gaga, I mean, not Gaga, but mm -hmm. you know someone like her, you know. Right. That'd be pretty interesting if Gaga did this movie. I don't she's mm. so serious as an actress. Could she ever just have as much fun as this? That'd be really interesting. If anything, maybe her next thing should just be a comedy. Um <laughs> but anyway, so Whoopi had already been in those big movies also at this exact same time. How interesting. She was also on TV in Star Trek Next Generation, oh, a show, right. and a voice in Captain Planet. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. She was Gaia? Gaia? Oh, the Mother Earth mm -hmm. voice. Oh. Some other movies she had just done leading up to this. The Player, Robert Altman movie, same year. That was in theaters the same time this was in theaters. Soap Dish, which I love, was the year before. Never saw that one. Also with Kathy and Jimmy. Such a fun movie. Sally Field, Elizabeth Shue. Moving right along, Maggie Smith, she had just previously done Hook, which you watched with me, or you were working on candle stuff while it was on. We talked about that on this show. There are three vows every nun must accept. The vow of poverty, mm -hmm. the vow of obedience, mm -hmm. and the vow of chastity. I am out of here. Thanks so much for watching. Next week will be part two of this discussion. And in the meantime, please follow Release Date Rewind on Instagram. I'm